Hey everyone, a very good morning to all of you. Myself Neha Gupta, your mentor for current affairs. So let's begin today's class. Guys, before beginning with anything else, let me inform you that we have launched the live courses for RBI Sabi and Abad, and this is our mobile application. These are the sources which you can use to reach out to us in case you need any kind of guidance, because the sole motto of us is that we need to help you because that is the need of ours. Because a teacher instructs, a mentor constructs, and we are the mentors of yours. So, if you are in the need of any kind of guidance related to your preparation, related to your exam, or related to your career, then you can definitely reach out to us by using these channels. Now, that was the introduction. Let's begin with the video itself. The first question is: Nihon Shu is the alcoholic beverage of which country? So clearly, you can see the options out of which Japan, guys, is the right answer. Now, what is the news exactly? First of all, let me tell you that Nihon, Nihon Shu is a alcohol, is an alcohol belonging to Japan. So this is Nihon Shu. Jinko neend aa rahi thi, interest nahi aa raha tha. Mujhe lagta hai ab interest aa gaya session mein, hai na? So what is the news? The news is that Japan is seeking the GI tag from India for its Nihon Shu alcoholic beverage. Now, this Nihon Shu is not any kind of a beverage. It is a part of the lifestyle and culture of Japan because it is used in many cultural activities at many, uh, you can say, auspicious and important cultural events in Japan. Then I don't understand why Japan is seeking the GI tag from India because we have the World Intellectual Property Organization (WIPO). Which provides the certification for all types of intellectual property, be it your trademark, be it your copyright, be it your patents, and uh, your GI tag. Vipo is the organization which provides the certifications against all these intellectual properties. Then I don't understand that why is Japan seeking the GI tag from India? That too under a GI regulation of Indian land. Okay, the GI tag is sought under the Geographical Indication of Goods Registration and Prevention Act of 1999. Okay, so this is a task for all the students who are curious enough to find the answer of this question. That why does India, why does Japan seek this GI tag from India? What is the need of it? Okay, because in India, why do we provide GI tag to the products in order to increase its market reach? In order to increase increase its, uh, you can say market value. Okay, oh, because of that, we provide the GI tag, and after giving the GI tag, the products value not only in domestic market but in international market also increases. So that's the idea of giving GI tags on. Indian land to different products, but why is Japan seeking an Indian GI tag? I don't understand that. Okay, so this is your task. Do find it out. Now, one more thing which is important that is that Nihon Shu is the alcoholic drink created out of fermented rice. Okay, so rice is the main ingredient. There is rice, there is water, and there is a fungi which is used to create this Nihon Shu. The other two ingredients are not important, but rice is important because that's the main ingredient of it. So you should be aware of the question that which crop is used to create Nihon Shu beverage. Okay, so that is your. Uh, important fact. Now, apart from this, we are talking about Japan. So, a very basic fact I want to tell you about the geography of Japan is that Japan is an archipelago of 4,000 small islands. I guess we have discussed this fact prior as well in one of my videos earlier. But there is no harm in revising the content, okay? And this revision will help us in retaining these facts for a longer period of time, right? So, it is. An archipelago of 4,000 small islands, but the main islands of Japan are only four. First is Hokkaido, then Honshu, then Kyushu, and Shikoku. These are the four main islands of Japan. One more island is important, that is Okinawa, which is located far off from the from these four islands. Okay, so this much is the relevant fact from Japan. Now, question number two is. Where is South Asia's first state-of-the-art, most advanced biplane cardiac uh, catheterization laboratory established? So here, the right answer is option A, D.Y. Patel Medical College, which is located in Mumbai. Now, what is it? First of all, note this place. It is the first of its kind 
state of the art state of the art means the modern laboratory it is uh, equipped with all the modern uh, equipments or technology now it is for providing the uh, facilities for the cardiologist okay cardiologist se related hai ye laboratory that much is important for you to remember uh, apart from this you don't have to go into too much details all the facts that can be asked from this news are presented in this slide as well as one more slide so let's look at the facts first is the name of this laboratory second is the name of the hospital where it is located dy dy patel medical college hospital and research center dy patel medical will be suffice for you to remember okay in navi mumbai then this is set up by wipro ge healthcare this is also an important fact it can be asked and another fact that is important is that it is south asia's first state of the art the cardiac laboratory okay cath laboratory now guys i have already told you this fact that it is south asia's first state of the art uh, uh, advanced model of cath lab which is used by the cardiologist now one more fact is here that we all need to pay attention to which is related to comedian late comedian rajesh shrivastava last month we witnessed the unfortunate demise of this comedian uh, rajesh shrivastava but after his death there is one most important event that took place that is vitropsy india did first for the first time uh, india conducted the vitropsy and the vitropsy was conducted on his body so vitropsy is virtual autopsy now it is the first time in the entire south asia and southeast asia where the vitropsy was conducted now which hospital of india conducted this vitropsy this is your question do tell me in the comment section below because i have taught you this so i expect my students to answer this okay question number 3 is which state has launched the kunj app a mobile application to prevent cyber crime against children in the state so here option a kerala is the right answer what is the news the news is very simple the cm of kerala pinayri vijayan has released uh, has launched this mobile application kunj app okay k for kerala k for kunj theek okay? hai and the basic idea is to prevent the cyber crime against children question number 4 which state has launched to the strengthening and augmentation of municipal revenue for infrastructure development in delhi uh, okay so it is in the question itself samriddhi scheme to provide major relief to the property owners so don't worry this question will be corrected in the spotlight as well as in the pdf itself now samriddhi scheme has been launched by delhi you have read it in the question itself what is the purpose of samriddhi samriddhi is the scheme which has been first of all launched by the lg of delhi and not the government of delhi first of all remember this so lg is vinay kumar saxena who was earlier the uh, chairman of kvic khadi village and uh, industrial industries council who is the current chairman of kvic this is your task do tell me in the comment section below now coming back to this news so delhi lg has launched this scheme samriddhi under this scheme basically all the property owners the residents the residents okay plus the commercial places so residential and the commercial places the owners of these places will have to pay the principal amount of their loan and the amount of penalty and interest will be waived off under under the samriddhi scheme now why would the government do that the basic purpose is to uh, basically uh, take out the principal amount from these people from these borrowers otherwise they are not uh, right now ready to pay their principal also so that uh, in order to encourage these people to pay their principal amount at least this samriddhi scheme has been launched by the delhi government okay now recently related to property only the delhi government uh, the conversation related to this news was already there that delhi government should authorize the unauthorized colonies and paying heed to this uh, controversy the delhi government it had 
authorized 1731 unauthorized colonies and this is not a very old news it happened recently like last year or i guess last to last year this happened but it happened uh, it is a very fresh news as far as the reality state of the the national capital territory of delhi is concerned okay so do remember this fact as well that delhi had authorized these many unauthorized colonies in the union territory and now this scheme has been launched which basically uh, provides the property rights obviously property rights were already there with the borrowers of the loan now this scheme is basically waiving of the interest and the penalty on the late payers that's the basic idea so that we can gauge out the money the principal money out of those people Okay, the next question is which state has launched India's first migrant tracking system? So here guys, Maharashtra is the first state to launch the migrant tracking system. The conversation to launch such kind of a system was started back in the year 2020 when we saw the phenomenon of reverse migration. I hope all of you are aware of this term. What is reverse migration? Migration is going from the hometown to another place for work for study okay now reverse migration is from uh, going from the place of work or study back to the hometown and why did this happen because of the lockdowns caused by the covid pandemic right now because of these reverse migration the tension or the issue related to the social welfare of the migrants came into limelight and that is why many governments started to launch schemes which will provide the coming migrant workers the jobs in their hometowns only in their home cities only and many states have also announced to launch these kinds of systems okay which will track the movement of the migrants within the state and out of the state okay the people who are leaving maharashtra and the people who are coming into maharashtra so that's the basic idea. Now, uh, amid all these controversies or all these talks, Maharashtra has become the first state to launch this kind of a system which will track the movement of the workers from one place to another place. Now, why does Maharashtra want to track the movement of migrants? The basic idea is to provide them the social welfare scheme. Okay. So, uh, in order to bring all the migrants and the lower class people under the net of the social security scheme, such applications have been developed by the state governments, okay? And this is the first time that migrant tracking system has been developed. The basic focus of Maharashtra is to provide the integrated child development services to the children of the migrants who are below the age of 18, as well as the pregnant and lactating mothers who are associated with the Anganwadi centers. So that's the basic idea. So the focus is on the pregnant women, lactating mothers, and children so that we can cover them under the uh, web of the social security scheme now how will maharashtra government identify migrants there will be a unique identity number which will be given to every migrant worker okay that's the basic idea now we all know that the lower class people who uh, the lower class as in the people who belong to the lower income group they travel from one state to another to work and now in the wake of protectionism every state is launching the schemes or the laws under which they uh, reserve a certain percentage in the private sector as well for the home state people so that is a tragic fact but that is also a compulsion because in many states people from the outer states come and they take the jobs and the people who are from that state they are left jobless so that's the situation we cannot do anything about it but one thing that the government has ensured is that every migrant who is going from one place to another place that person should get the benefit of the public distribution system PDS system under the National Food Security Act of 2030. How has the government ensured this? By launching or you can say by integrating the one nation, one Russian card. So through this scheme, what does the government do? The government has integrated the entire web of the PDS systems with the ration cards and now the migrant worker wherever they want to travel they can travel they can use their ration card and avail the ration at the subsidized rates from the pds system 
at present we have all the states 36 total number of states and union territories 28 states eight union territories have uh, acceded to the one nation one ration card scheme they have implemented this scheme now your task is to tell me when was this scheme launched one more fact that i want to highlight here is which is very very important the fact is that assam was the 36th state to implement the one nation one ration card scheme. okay that is all for this news now let's move on to the question number six recently India and US navies organized the second edition of the India US Fire Services MTBS HABR exercise named Tiger Triumph at Vishakha Patna. Which of the following exercises is not conducted by India and the US? So, here the question has been asked uh, in a very tricky manner. So, what is the right answer? The right answer is option E, Ajay Warrior, because it is the exercise with UK, Army of UK. Now, before moving into the news itself, I hope all of you are aware that the new Prime Minister of UK has been appointed and it is a matter of proud for all of us that now the person of Indian origin is reigning, is ruling the colonizers of our land. So that is a very proud moment for all of us. Okay, We have shown that the leadership of India is next to none. Okay. Now coming back to this news. India and US navies have organized the second edition of the India US Tri Services. Understand? Tri Services, Army, Air Force, Navy, all these three are connected. Okay? Amphibious HADR exercise. HADR is Humanitarian Assistance Disaster Relief Exercise. So it is conducted in order to ensure the interoperability between India and the US Armed Forces whenever, uh, in case of any disaster. Uh, in a case of any natural calamity. Okay? So, so, if there is any kind of natural calamity, how uh, efficiently India and US armed forces can uh, work together to mitigate that situation that would be ensured through these exercises because these exercises help them in practicing the situation again and again. And you must know this fact that simulation is a very effective technique of on-the-job training that helps the people in uh, getting efficient in their job. And in the armed forces, nothing is better than the simulation technique. And this is like that only. Now, it aims to increase the operability. I have already told you. So what you need to remember from this news, the edition, second edition, then the name Tiger Triumph and the place, Vishakha Patna in Andhra Pradesh. Now I have guys knowledge nuggets for all of you. First is, first point here is that India and US conduct Yudhabhyas, Army exercise, Vajraprahar, Special Force exercise and Cope India Air Force exercise. Multilateral exercises in which India and uh, US both participate are Malabar exercise, India, Australia, Japan and uh, your US. And in fact, this Malabar exercise in itself started as the disaster relief exercise because all these four uh, organizations, all these four countries, India, US, Japan and Australia came together to help Indonesia in the tsunami uh, back in the year 2007. And then they, uh, they formed a group, formal group, and then the Malabar exercise came into being. The next exercise is the red flag, which is again a multilateral exercise conducted by US. India participates in this. So these are the exercises. Please guys remember the joint military exercises of India with other nations and the multilateral exercises in which India participate, especially if they have been conducted very recently. Okay. Question number seven is, in October 2022, Agni Prime new generation ballistic missile was successfully test fired off the coast of Odisha from the APJ Abdul Kalam I. What is the range of this new generation advanced variant of the Agni missile? So here, whenever there is a missile, the range of the missile is very, very important for you to remember because otherwise there is nothing else to be asked from the questions of these kinds of news. We know that there are hardly any two to three places from where the missile launches are done. And the most important one is the Andhra Pradesh 
state itself from there many missiles missile launches are conducted so what uh, what can what kind of a question can be created out of this news apart from the range so range is very very important now coming to the range the answer is 1000 to 2000 kilometers so guys agni is uh, agni prime is the part of the uh, agni series of missiles which again is a part of the integrated missile development program started by the apj abdul kalam okay and in the integrated missile development program we developed missiles like nag prithvi trishul akash and agni so these are the five missiles which were developed under the program and when was the program started this is your question tell me in the comment section now coming back to this news agni missile agni prime is a variant of the agni missile itself and uh, it is a ballistic missile which has been launched from the apj abdul kalam of the coast of odisha okay and the range of this is 1000 to 2000 km now guys we are talking about the missiles so i am going to give you a brief distinction between the ballistic as well as the cruise missiles because these are the only two types of the missiles uh, largely okay so ballistic missiles are those missiles which are firstly shot for uh, for uh, destruction on another continent okay so you can consider it another continent and this one is continent a okay so from one continent to attack on the other continent we use the ballistic missile because you can clearly see the trajectory it is following it is launched from this place it goes into space and then it is uh, navigated towards its destination towards its target so ballistic missiles first of all in ka range bahut bada hota hai because they are the intercontinental missiles chote missile se to kaam hi nahi banega samudra mein hi gir jayenge theek hai secondly they are very destructive in nature because they are capable of carrying heavy war, uh, warheads okay payload inka bahut zyada hota hai payload is basically the explosive which can which they can fill in their warhead and this is the warhead the topmost part of the missile the remaining part of the missile is just the engine which helps in carrying this warhead from one place to another place that's the basic idea some ballistic missiles are so powerful that they can destroy the areas which come in between their targets okay suppose this missile if the explosives are filled in these parts also so when they drop on earth they can create explosion so some missiles are that powerful now cruise missiles ballistic missile takes this much long route but cruise missile ke itne tantrums nahi hote they directly go to the target and hit it but obviously they do not have that uh, long range unka range bahut short hota hai cruise missiles ka and their path their flight is also narrow in comparison to the ballistic you can clearly see the distance but the height of the cruise missiles the height of the flight is very short you can say that's why sometimes cruise missiles are also called the tree missiles because their height is usually uh, equivalent to a full developed tree they are very accurate now we have seen the example of a ballistic missile agni okay the range is 1000 to 2000 km related to the cruise missile we cannot have any better example than the brahmos missile brahmos is the cruise missile which is known for its accuracy which is known for its for its nuclear capability so that is the example i hope you have understood the difference between the cruise and the ballistic missile obviously i have given you a very superficial level of distinction but i am not a defense person neither are you so we don't need to go into the construction of the missile and and all because that is not needed for rbs ab or nabad exam i hope you have understood the basic difference okay the question number 8 is who has been appointed as the charge of the affairs in the us embassy in new delhi so here elizabeth jones is the right answer now this question is only important if your examination is in one month from this date otherwise this question has no relevance okay such type of appointments are not important because they are uh, they are very uh, you can say they are numerous आए दिन कोई ना कोई चार्ज ऑफ द अफेयर अपॉइंट होते हैं आए दिन कोई ना कोई अम्बेसी में एम्बेसडर अपॉइंट होते हैं दैट इज वाई आई टेल यू नॉट टू कवर सच अपॉइंटमेंट क्योंकि ये बहुत सारे राइट नाउ वन मोर थिंग 
delegations are related we i recommend you the same thing okay delegations the foreign delegations which come to india are not important until or unless your examination is nearby as a mentor it's my responsibility to inform each and every student of mine about the current affairs which are happening uh, right in the day but as a student you have to be smart enough to choose what you have to read what you uh, have to uh, select from the spotlight magazine okay so such kind of news is only important when you have your exam coming up question number 9 is when is the pol world polio day observed so october 24 is the right answer now october 24 we do not uh, only celebrate the world polio polio day polio day we have two more days one is the world development information day there is no theme of this day in this year United Nations Day. This का भी कोई theme नहीं है. Then World Polio Day. The theme is World Polio Day and Beyond: A Healthier Future for Mothers and Children. Okay. Now, when did India uh, launch the National Polio Immunization Program? This is your task to tell me. Question number ten is: When is the UN Disarmament Week celebrated? So it is celebrated from October twenty-four to thirty. now we celebrate two important events during this week first is the disarmament week another one is the global media and information literacy week okay both of these weeks are important one is important for uh, ensuring the peace in the world and second one is important for maintaining the peace right so disarmament week has the theme disarmament securing humans humanity's future and global media and information literacy week theme is nurturing trust of media and information literacy impact okay ab itni badi theme yaad rakhna is very difficult so what you can do is you can pick out the uh, keywords so keyword is nurturing trust or trust trust media information literacy impact these are the five keywords aage piche ka nahi yaad rakhoge to bhi chalega otherwise there are only three words which are left so if you can remember the entire thing you can do so or if you can remember the keywords that helps you out then you can remember the keywords also okay so here guys this video ends i hope you have enjoyed the content provided by me do mention the answers of the question which i ask you during the video thank you so much for watching the video keep learning